Hey, welcome to the Bronze Serpent. Today I'm going to be showing you exactly why I named my channel the Bronze Serpent, a Christian YouTube channel. Why would I do that? I want you to stay till the end because I'm going to tell you exactly who really pushed me down that pathway, but also what prayer that I did to get real with God that really helped me open up my eyes because I put it all on him. But also, too, I want to take a look at this con this this ticker right here at the bottom. Is the Bible a Christian idol? Put it your comments below. I know that's can, that's kind of hard for you guys to hear. Um, is the Bible a uh, Christian idol? Is that possible? Can that even be possible? But watch the video first and let me know what you think. But let's take a look at this video and tell me um, what you think about it. This will be hard for you to hear, but test everything. In the book of Numbers, chapters 21, verses 4 to 9, God commands Moses to create a bronze serpent to serve as a remedy for the Israelites, bitten by venomous snakes in the wilderness. It was a beacon of hope, a symbol of divine intervention and healing. Fast forward to the reign of King Hezekiah, and we find in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 18, verse 4, a shocking twist. The bronze serpent, once a tool for good, had become an object of idolatrous worship. Recognizing this, King Hezekiah destroys it, an act that seems contradictory but is deeply profound. Here we see that even something initially created for a good purpose, under the divine command of God himself, can be misused, leading people into the sin of idolatry. In this lies a profound lesson about the misuse of sacred objects, even those endowed with divine power. Just as the bronze serpent was misused, so too can the Bible be misused. The bronze serpent stands as a stark reminder of how even good things, when taken out of context, can lead to idolatry. The Bible, God's inerrant word, is no exception to this. It's easy to fall into the trap of venerating the Bible, holding it to a standard like God, making it a type of metaphorical bronze serpent. Let's consider John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This refers to Jesus Christ, not the Bible. The Bible, like the bronze serpent, is a tool to understand and connect with God, not an object of worship. Reflect on the first two commandments. Commandment one, you shall have no other gods before me. And the second, you shall not make for yourself an idol, Exodus 23, 4. Provide us with a solid foundation for our faith. They guide us away from the pitfalls of idolatry and towards a pure devotion to God. In the story of the bronze serpent, we see how easily a divine remedy can become an object of worship itself, a clear violation of these commandments. Similarly, we must be wary of how we view our Bible. It is a wonderful tool, a powerful testament of God's word, but it should never be raised to the level of divinity. These commandments urge us to consider our actions in light of our devotion to God. Are we truly putting God first in everything? Are we creating idols, even unwittingly? As we journey in faith, may we always remember that it is God alone we worship, and His Word is a guide, not a God. Wow. Okay, so I I know some of you guys are probably, your heads are spinning on some of this on, wow, what did I just watch, right? What did I just watch? Um, and that's good. This whole channel is about getting you guys to think about what? what you're reading and how it got there right because if you don't know the full history how canon was put together um that's a big deal you need to go down that rabbit hole and when you go to seminary it's a little bit different um seminary they make you sign a, a state a doctrinal statement so you can't really veer off a certain pathway of way they think and there's a lot of dispensationalism within seminary. And dispensationalism is, and there's hyper dispensationalism as well. And there's a lot of that out there right now. Um, and what it is means that Jesus taught the Jews when he was on earth only, not to the Gentiles. So whatever his words say is really for the Jews and not for the Gentiles. That is completely false. It's inaccurate. Jesus never said that. He says his teachings are eternal forever. There's so much we can go on with that. Now, I'm going to give you some resources about all that in the description here um, from a friend of mine, Doug. He um, uh, he has Jesus Words Only um, website. It's amazing. I say test everything you find there and because you're going to go down some rabbit holes that you're just going to go, wow, I can't believe um, we've been thinking about this the whole time. So let me uh, let me show you exactly why um, 
Well, let me talk about the video a little bit. So basically what, it, what I'm saying here is that anything on earth, well, even the Bible, shouldn't be made into an idol. And, and some of us, I know, we're thinking is, well, it's God's word. How can it, it, how can it be on, uh, not on the same level as God? Nothing on earth. He's already warned us in the, the Ten Commandments not to do, do that. And then in the old scriptures, he never said we elevate those um, on earth, anything on earth, to high, as him, to high as him. The reason why is because things can change. We don't know. For example, in the book of John, in the gospel of John, right, we have um, um, proof shown that uh, a story that Jesus says may not have really been in the original, it wasn't in the original uh, manuscripts. So we, we all heard that story about the adulterous women. And Jesus said, whoever is without sin, cast the first stone. I love that story. It's great. However, it wasn't in the, in the older manuscripts. It was later added. Who added it? Who knows? Maybe a scribe. And there's been a lot of that where we see scribes adding certain things in there. Now, we have a lot of uh, what they call transmission issues where there's some slight variants um, all over the Bible, but those are slight variants, no big deal. But when you start going back into some of the older manuscripts, you'll start seeing there are some issues in, with the Septuagint as well. Some of you may know the Septuagint is the, the Greek Bible, and that's where we get a lot of our translations from, from the, New, from the King James. And there's been a lot of Catholicism sweeping through, the, through that, through that Septuagint. So we got to watch it because a lot of their, a lot of they have their own narrative, their own reason why they're doing what they're doing, uh, the Catholics. And we're not going on a tangent here, but let me let me let me get us back over here. So I know some of you guys are thinking Second Timothy, right? Um, about hey, God, every scripture is is breathed by God. Well, you need to look at the full context of that. Do they have canon? When, when he said that, no, they didn't have this canon. What they had was the minor prophets and the old prophets, like Jesus, the scroll. They had the Isaiah, Daniel. They had the Torah. They had those, and that's what he's speaking about, not the New Testament writings. And we can, we can and, I, and I believe you'll see most historical scholars will, will talk about that. Uh, well, anyways, the reason why I call this the bronze serpent is, is it really – what I what I learned a couple of years ago then um, really kind of flipped the way I was thinking, and and I used to I didn't realize being a normal Christian, I really raised this up as holy as God, and I shouldn't have done that, and I had to repent of that, and once I did that, things really opened up to me a lot more than what they were, because before I was seeking God, but I really wasn't understanding and really seeing what was in the scriptures. And I would go to a lot of Bible studies with, with pastors that have been around for 50 years doing this stuff. And the more I started to get into, the more um, I started asking questions. And then um, here's one thing that really led me on this pathway of seeking God over everything is you know, trying to understand that really was, was this gentleman here. Now, I don't believe in his... Um, theology but he is a great what do you call his like historian so this guy daniel dr daniel wallace he is he's at the dallas the theological seminary but here's some of his credentials he dan is a senior research professor of the new testament studies at dallas theological seminary he has taught there for more than 32 years and the executive director of the center for the study of new testament manuscripts and it goes on from there. If you see his debates, if you see what he does online, he is big on, on textual criticism. He talks about all that. And, and that is a whole other thing. Um, it's a pretty complex on how they deal with manuscripts there. But what he said in one of his videos startled me really bad. It, it shook me to my core that I kept listening over and over and over. And I, and I thought, well, that's not, he, can't be think, he can't be saying this. So I went back and watched the entire video just in case I missed some context. And after a couple of days of doing this, it's weird. 
I have it. I couldn't find the video again. It's like it was taken down or something. And I'm still in search of it. Um, well, anyways, uh, I'm sure it's probably out there somewhere. Um, and I'm going to find it. And I should have recorded it. But I spent a couple of days listening to it and really seeking out about it. And what Daniel said, he told another colleague, is he was talking about text, textual criticism, about manuscripts, everything, how oh, the New Testament. And he says, and he told the guy, there is no certainty with the, with these manuscripts, but this is our best guess. And he followed up with, but it's a very good guess. And that, and I believe that it's a very good guess. But he was very serious when he said, this is our best guess. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sit right with me. I was like, wait a minute, I'm seeking, I'm, I'm putting my salvation, my trust in a best guess, making sure we have the right manuscript and translating it right to make sure, you know, on what I'm saying here. Wow, that really threw me for a loop. And what I realized was I really need to see God more about everything, about what's going on in the Torah, what's going on with some of these books, the New Testament. And I can't just be blinded and, and just look at it and say, oh, well, this is what it says and fit God within the, the scriptures here. And say, That's it. And be done with it and not want to look at the historical part of it, the, the translation part of it, everything, because we see things shift a little bit and we see religion, um, religion leaders uh, shift the narrative a little bit. And that's an issue. But what that did it it pushed my confidence, and, or I should say, my hundred percent trust into the from the words to something that was um, how, how do I say it was what what is not um, best guess. I needed certainty. If I'm if I'm working on my salvation and I'm working on on telling other people about God, I need certainty. I don't need best guess from a theological um, professor. No, I need certainty from God himself, from Yahweh, right? So God showed me, goes, you've had it the entire time. It's our communication and prayer to the Lord himself, the relationship with the Lord. There's no best guess there. There's 100% certainty that he hears you, he's listening to you, and he'll respond to you. That is a certainty. So my my faith of always staying in the words here and just, you know, being a stickler shifted like, oh, wait a minute. That's okay. I love reading the Bible. I love what's in it to 100% putting that certainty into my prayers with the Lord. And I realized my prayer life was not as strong as it should have been. So that's what this whole channel is all about is anything that's on earth that could be idol be idolatry, take it out. Even if it was meant to be good, the Bible, I believe was meant to be good. And then what God said in here and, and what we see here, it was meant to be good, but we got to have our certainty and in, in our prayers to the Lord to guide us. That's what I've always seen. And and I got to tell you, my life totally changed once I started doing that. Things to my started opening up more about what is in the scriptures. Um, what are people saying? Other pastors. I mean, everything. My, it felt, felt like my discernment went up. But here, most importantly, my prayers got more intense. So during this time, <clears throat> I, I, this prayer totally changed my life. So once I found, found felt that my prayers are certain are certainty with God, you know, he's going to hear them. And I just got real with the Lord. That's when I started getting real with the Lord in my prayers. And I put it back on the Lord. I said, I told God, I said, look, God, you're putting me on this path. Great. And I'm telling other people, great. But I put it back on God. I said, God, I am 100% open to you in what you want to guide me. No matter how crazy it is, no matter how nutball I think it is, how, how whatever about your righteous son, Jesus, about the Bible, about you, about this universe, about people that, and about Satan, I am 100% open 
how what you want to guide me about and what you want to tell me, I will just faithfully consume it and obey it and be obedient to it. 100%. But I put it back on the Lord. I said, Lord, if I, if I'm doing something wrong, it is on you on, on, on far as like what I'm saying, <clears throat> because, and, and if I end up going to, you know, hell, I told, I told the Lord this, um, I said, it's on you because I, now I'm telling you, I'm 100%. You're everything part of my life. You know, you're guiding me 100%. So I need you, Lord, it's in your court to guide me and make sure I don't guide people the wrong way. Cause if these people go to the internal fire, that's on you because I'm, I'm, I, because I'm doing whatever I can, what you tell me, show me, you know, to be the right thing, no matter how crazy it sounds, it's on you. And, and I believe when I started praying those kind of prayers, putting everything back on the Lord for complete hundred percent guidance, he put, he, re, uh, uh, he put a sense of peace in me of like, yes. You know, now we're getting real. Now we're getting real into, you know, real spiritual warfare that's out there, real topics. Because um, God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Hell was not meant for us. It's meant for the fallen angels. We put ourselves to hell, put ourselves in hell. So, on our so, God has given us a great structure on how to try to walk righteously and how to and, and how to talk with them and be with them. So out of all this, if you get anything out of all this, is the bronze serpent is just a symbol to show uh, idolatry in your life. Even if it's something good, whether it's your Bible, whether it's your ministry, whether it's your church, um, people, get rid of all idolatry, period. And get your prayers real with the Lord. Serious, crazy prayers of and that's what he wants that's what i believe he wants he doesn't want this same traditional this and that's like whatever it's the same old thing no getting real with the lord putting it in his course and and basically throwing your hands is like lord if you if you if you really love me you're gonna guide me and i believe you do and i'm gonna trust anything that you throw at my throw at me so and even in my own season right now i'm going through a very tough season and it's crazy. It is nuts what's going on. But, you know, I have a sense of peace and joy about what's going on. It's like, God's got this. You know, he's got it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go through it. And I'm going to keep witnessing, praying, and, and, and just keeping the kingdom of heaven first. Seek the kingdom of heaven first over everything. And then all will be added to you. And, and that's why I believe Jesus' words are so important. And um, I'm going to put some resources here that you can look up Jesus' words only. But, um, but that's it, basically, guys, in a nutshell. I want you guys to take a look at this. Uh, the, the, um, let me put it back here. The little ticker in the yellow in the bottom there. Put your comments. On. What, is, what have you put in your life as an idol? And explain that. So, all right, guys, until next time, I really appreciate you watching this video. And I will see you on the next one. See you.